right, finishing off uh, a busy day with the number one seed, Quinnipiac Bobcats, and we'll start uh, just with some uh, commentary from each of the gentlemen here with us. We'll start with the head coach, Rand. Uh, first off, we're, we're excited to be here. We want to thank the city of Pittsburgh and the, uh, and the Pittsburgh Penguins and Robert Morris uh, for hosting us. Um, it's a phenomenal city, phenomenal rink. Uh, like I said, we're, we're excited, um, and I want to, you know, just give my players credit. They've, they've played hard all year, done a great job to get us to this point, um, and also give credit to my assistant coaches, um, Bill Riga, Reed Cashman, and, and Danny Myers. They've been, they've been absolutely awesome for us this year, and uh, we couldn't get to this point without them. Ben, what's happening? Uh, not a whole lot. It's been a great experience and a great ride so far for the whole team. I'd like to thank uh, the Penguins organization, Robert Morris for setting all this up, as well as Quinnipiac. It's been a great, great ride and experience so far. All the staff's been extremely helpful. Coaches down to the players. Everybody's been uh, helping each other out, and we're excited. Zach? Yeah, again, I just want to thank everybody involved with the event. It's, uh, it's been great so far, Very, a lot of hospitality for us. Um, it's always been a great year for us, and we look to, you know, extend that this weekend, and hopefully we can put on a good show for everybody. Jeremy. I'd uh, like to congratulate the other teams uh, for coming here. I know all of our teams very excited uh, to be here, and we look forward to having a good couple days. Thanks. Matt? Yeah, just to reiterate what the last four gentlemen said, just want to say thanks to, to everyone that helped put the Frozen Four together. It's, it's been great so far, and we're all excited to play some hockey. All right, and away we go with your questions. We'll use the microphones as we have. Okay, please identify yourself and your affiliation. Uh, it's Sam Werner with the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Uh, Coach, you know, I know you've said a lot this year that you guys don't have a score in the top 100 or whatever, but you know, five goals in the last game with Matthew getting a hat trick. Do you feel like your offense might be a little bit underrated, even? Uh, yeah, well, we've generated a lot of chances this year. We just earlier in the year we didn't seem to be finishing as well as we are now, but uh, you know certainly we had we had nine goals last weekend, so that's that's good. Um, and we do create a lot of offense. You know, we, we a lot of our defense is from our offense. We, we we get a buzz going and we cycle the puck and, and we keep it down low. Um, you know, the big thing that I think we, we need to get going and it's it's been better is our power play. You know, we've been working on it a lot and I, I feel like uh, I think it's it's ready to kind of kind of take off. But we we get the we get the good looks. You know, we just got to start finishing a little bit better. Bob? Yeah, maybe for Zach, uh, Bob's now on HL.com. Zach, maybe you can comment on the, the game against Canisius. You had to come back, and then the next night it seemed like, you know, that wasn't, uh, wasn't as much of an impetus to have to play that type of game again that he did the previous night. But what, what is it about the Canisius game that you put behind you that you're not concerned about at all coming into tomorrow? And I mean, what is it you guys have done to make sure that Canisius doesn't kind of become a repeating Act tomorrow night. Well, I think uh, you know we obviously let that one get a little bit of it away from us at the start, um, but you know we came back great in that game. We felt confident the whole time. Uh, obviously, we don't want to put ourselves in that position, but um, there's a sense of confidence in our team that you know we were able to do that, and uh, we were excited after that game, obviously. And we came on the next night and had a pretty, pretty dominating, nice performance for ourselves. And I think we've just we've kind of done the same thing we've done all year. We've put things behind us when they don't go our way, and and we look forward to the next game. So I think right off the bat we did that with the next game, and then you know it's in our rearview mirror now. Further questions? Okay. Uh, NATO and U.S. College Hockey. Just for Rand and any of the players, um, you've been here a little bit, got a few practices practices under your belt. Um, has the the wow factor kind of worn off, or is it still like you know, hey, we're, you know, we're in the Frozen Four, you know, can't believe this. Coach? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know if the wow factor ever, ever, <laughs> ever wears off. It's a, you know, it's a special moment for I think for any team that can make the, the Frozen Four, and um, you know, it's going to be electric tomorrow night. You know, for all four teams when that puck drops, and uh, there, there's going to be a wow factor then with the, the scoreboard going and the, the fans going. So, I think in the in the end, you know, we have a veteran team, and uh, I fully expect uh, you know it'll be a few butterflies, but I fully expect us to handle that that nervousness and channel it and and come out of the gate and be real good there early in the game. Matt, what are you thinking? Frozen 4, 18,000? Well, it's exciting. Obviously, like we said, it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity. And you know, you just got just to gotta go out there and do what we've been doing all season. So it should be good. You want to keep going? You want to hear from a couple other guys? You good? OK. All right. Right here in front. Andy Marriage from the New England Hockey Journal. 
there's four of you, so whoever wants to pick it up, um, and, and coach, if you don't mind answering as well, these are four non-traditional programs, the way people kind of look at it, that it's it's four teams that, um, that haven't been here before and that um, not a lot of people pay a lot of attention to beyond, you know, sort of the college hockey circles. Do you feel like you guys have, have kind of made a statement, not only your team, but the other three teams in this tournament, that, um, you know, the, the BCs, the Wisconsins, the Michigans aren't here, that it's four kind of new programs. Do you feel like it, it says something about the state of the sport that you guys are here and that someone's going to win a national title for the first time? Ben, why don't you tackle that one? You know, I think uh, college hockey is really developing. And then, you know, a lot of teams are growing as well as organizations. Like, we have a young organization as it is. And, I mean, St. Cloud, UMass, Lowell, as well as uh, – Excuse me. Yale's, uh, Yale's, been around, Yale's been around for a long time, and I think it's just, you know, everybody's working hard, and hopefully you get the bounces. But every program is developing, everybody's working hard, and, like, our uh, organization as a whole, we're a little bit older team, and just sometimes it's uh, how it goes, and having 10 seniors might make a different poll in it and whatnot. But a lot of it's developing, a lot of it's changing, especially maybe in from Minnesota, having five teams to almost play for, but choosing to come out east, it's, it's a lot of bigger decisions. Jeremy. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I would like to say that um, you are kind of seeing that more more teams with Union being in the Final Four or the Frozen Four last year and us being here this year. Um, teams can come from anywhere. It's not just those main teams. And um, our, our program has grown so much. And I think uh, college hockey in general has just grown so much. And there's, there's talent coming from everywhere. And uh, our coaching staff has done a great job of getting the right players here in the right systems. And... Uh, that's just what it takes to become a, pro a top program like that. Coach? Uh, well, first of all, I'd say college hockey is, is the best it's ever been. I think it's, I think it's outstanding right now. I think the, the level of talent is, is fantastic. I think the coaching's great across the board. Um, I think uh, the, the one thing that, that we've, got, we've done a phenomenal job with as, as a group uh, of, of organizations is, is handling the, the strength and conditioning. Um, it's 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 awesome. Like we're we're making boys into men, and that's why we had you know th 300 plus uh, college guys in the NHL last year. Um, in terms of the college game, in, in terms of parity, I think there's as much parity now as you've ever had, and uh, goaltending is a big part of that. And and you see, um, you know, over and over again, uh, you know, guys will emerge. You know, stud goaltenders will emerge at, at different programs that. Um, you know, the, the middle programs, whatever, that, that will elevate them, et cetera. And, and some of the big programs are striking out on the goalies they get, they get. And it's a big equalizer in the game of hockey. It's a big equalizer in the NHL right now. So I think the parity is going to continue. Um, it's so hard to predict and so hard to recruit a goalie and understand where he's going to be at 16, 17 years old and know when he's going to be at 21, 22. So I think, I think you'll continue to see this happen. Julie. Julie Robenheimer from Hockey Buzz. Guys, throughout the year you have been battling this um, – idea of what it means to be a, Quinnip a Quinnipiac hockey player and what this program is capable of doing. And as the year progresses, you've just been kind of proving people wrong. Do you still feel that you have something to prove that there's more that you guys are, are capable of accomplishing to put that final stamp on this is what it means? Zach? I mean, obviously, we're a smaller program, but I think um, we've done a good job of, you know, proving ourselves this year with each little step that we've taken. Um, I think overall, that's going to take more time. I think, you know, teams in the future are going to obviously have to play a role in, you know, making Quinnipiac a, a household name around the college hockey and, and beyond that. But I think for this year, I mean, we want to prove that we're, you know, we have that what it takes to be the best and win that, that last game there. So. You know, I don't think it's so much that we have something to prove. It's something that we want to prove to ourselves. And, uh, you know, if we prove that to everybody else along the way, that's, that's a bonus. Matt? Yeah, like you said, I think, I think the sky's the limit for us. And people aren't going to stop talking about, you know, small programming. You know, obviously, they've been – people have been saying that uh, we're not fully proven until we've beaten WCHA teams and things like that. So I think the only way to, to kind of to stop the talk is to just to win, I think. We're confident that we're going to be able to do that, and I think that's all we need. Okay. Back, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Cox, SB Nation. Uh, Coach, I was wondering if you could talk about from the time you got to Quinnipiac until now, the progression of the whole school in general, and then the hockey program with the new arena, and how it, how it feels to uh, get to the pinnacle of sport at the Frozen Four. 
Uh, yeah, well, Quinnipiac University, or it used to be Quinnipiac College, I mean, the, the progression over my 19 years is, is amazing. It's, it's been unbelievable. Uh, we had, uh, my first year, we had roughly uh, 2,000 applications. Um, and then this year we'll, we'll break, we should break 20,000. And that's just staggering type of growth. And that, that's a credit to President John Leahy. He is, uh, he's done a phenomenal job in, in, in growing our, our university. And, you know, we went from college to now a university. We're adding a medical school. Um, our academic standards have, have gone through the roof. He's really a visionary and, and impressive in everything that he's done. Um, and, the, and the driving force really 15 years ago when we went to Division I Athletics and, and why we wanted to bring in Jack McDonald and, and, and make the transition for us was to become a better academic school. And I remember that when it all happened. I'm, I'm happy as can be because all of a sudden I become a Division I head coach. Uh, and uh, I remember people going, well, why, how does that drive academics? And, and, and it does. Um, you know, you, you win in athletics. You know, it's a Doug Flutie rule. You, you, he throws that pass and Boston College's uh, applications go through the roof the next few years. And, and, then, and then you can be more selective from an admissions uh, uh, standpoint. But, uh, you know, uh, athletics has, has driven our school and certainly this, this run that we're on now is going to help our, our university and helps our alumni base and development. And there's so many things that come into play. So, you know, we're proud of our accomplishments. But, uh, you know, I give, I give John Leahy and Jack McDonald a lot of credit for having the vision that, that this could happen for us. Uh, can we use your mic? Yeah. Yeah, Just as a quick follow-up, did you ever imagine actually making the Frozen Four, you know, 15 years ago? With F 15 years ago? Or, yeah, I don't know. Uh, not, not 15 years ago, no. I mean, uh, I, I certainly, as, as one of my goals, I, I felt that that was something I wanted to achieve at some point. But, you know, going back 15, 16, 17 years ago, we were, we're a Division three program, and all of a sudden just transitioning to D1. And our, everybody forgets us, but our first year Division One, when we were, we were the MAC, which is now Atlantic Hockey, the eight schools in that league, we, we did not play one game against the outside four conferences. Not one game was played against any of us. Nobody would play us. It was unbelievable. Um, and everybody seems to forget that. So at that point, we were just trying to get anybody to get games. Like, we weren't thinking Hockey East. Um, you know, if you ask me, you know, five years ago, did I think this was possible? Yeah. You know, did I think it was going to happen this quickly? No. I mean, our, we've only been in our rink six and a half years. You know, our rink six, you know, six and a half years ago, we were playing in a town rink. And you just, you're not going to do it from there from a recruiting standpoint. Bill, uh, Bill Clodier from New Haven Register for a coach and for, uh, for Zach. Um, you want to talk about tomorrow night's opponent and especially uh, Drew LeBlanc and, and the pressure that they, type, they, they put on you guys. Zach. I mean, obviously, uh, they're obviously a high scoring team, you know, high octane offense. Uh, and LeBlanc's a big part of that. Uh, so, you know, we, we're going to have a work cut out for us, but, uh, you know, we pride ourselves in being a very defensive club, and we, and we, can, uh, we can score too. So, you know, we just got to keep to our game and keep to our, our principles, what we help, helps us win, and uh, we feel, you know, we'll, we'll be able to handle what they, they're going to throw at us. Coach? Uh, yeah, I mean, St. Cloud's a, a, a phenomenal offensive team. They, they're, they're three lines deep. You know, uh, LeBlanc obviously makes them go. He's an, he's an awesome player. Um, I heard, heard Bob Motzko before talk about how he makes other players better and, and watching six or seven games on, on film, it's, there's no question, he makes players better. Um, but it's not, just, it's not just him, I mean, Dowd's excellent, Hanowski, I mean, there, Brzezinski's got 22 buckets, I mean, they, they're deep, you know, last weekend, Joey Benick on the third line has four goals. Um, so it's a deep team, they, they, find, they find a way to score, they find a way to win, similar to what we've done this year. So I think for us, ultimately, we, we need to compete, we need to do what we do well. And, and really try to shut down their transition game. Uh, Nate from U.S. College Hockey again. Uh, just coach, coach and Matt, um, your top line at the Joneses, and, and Matt has obviously been playing pretty well, but what led you to want to put them back together for the last month of the season and kind of into the postseason here? And just Matt, if you could uh, just comment on what it's like to be back together with uh, Kellen and Connor. Coach? Uh, yeah, well, we, you know, I, I, the chemistry they have is phenomenal. We, we broke them up early in the year because they, they were just were struggling a little bit and pucks just were not going in for them. They were getting a lot of good looks, and I think they were getting a little frustrated. Their points weren't where they needed to be. So, uh, and then we had a couple injuries and stuff, so we, we, we broke them up a little bit, took Matthew off that line for a little while, and, and we kept winning, and then we put Matthew back on the line, and we kept winning. So it, it, it's worked both ways. I think ultimately when we're at our best is, is those three are playing together, and, and, and they're, uh, they get their feet moving, and they're, they're you know, obviously a dynamic trio. And even more than the offense they provide, they, they set the pace for us, and that's how we want to play. We want to play at pace. We want to play at tempo. And that line is a, is a great energy line for us, and, and obviously can make plays too. Matt? Yeah, it's great to be back together with them. Um, you know, obviously as of late, we've kind of found our pace and our legs are moving better and stuff. But, you know, early on this season, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to play with Jeremy and stuff like that. So it didn't really bother me that we weren't together. But, you know, as of late, it's, it's good to be back to our old ways. 
This is the 66th annual NCAA Division I Men's Ice Hockey Championship in the house that 66 built Mario Lemieux. More questions. Hazy from the Beaver County Times. Uh, Rand, uh, you talked about the progression that the university has had, especially since you guys went Division I and uh, the impact of the new, new building. What's changed for you guys maybe in the last four or five years on ice? Has it been the impact of you know, recruiting, the move to the ECAC? What's improved your program on ice to the point where you're number one in the country and now in the Frozen Four? Uh, I, th I think there's, there's just a lot of things. It's kind of a perfect storm that happened this year for us. Uh, certainly we have 11 seniors. Um, which is great. Hartzell was was good his sophomore junior year, and now he's now he's now he's one of the best goalies in the country, or maybe the best. Um, so that's been a big reason. But we've also had um, we also had a lot of players that took huge jumps for us this year. Um, you know, even in our senior class, you know, like Ben Arndt uh, was always a good player for us. He stepped up. He's 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 had a big huge year from us defensively, and his numbers are better. But he's he's really he's really blossomed into a, into a big time player for us. Russ Goodman's had a good year. Kevin Bowie. Uh, obviously, Hartzell's jumped up, and then the sophomore class, um, you know, Danny Federico and Bryce Van Brabant. I mean, they they didn't play a lot as freshmen, and they're they're great players. Bryce is huge for us right now. He he he's physical. He wins battles. Uh, he sets the tone for us. And Danny was probably our seven last year. I think he played 16 games, and um, you know, he's he's probably our number two defenseman right now. So there's just so many things that have worked in our favor this year. And then I think ultimately, uh, it's just great character and great kids, and, and they, they come to work every day. Our practice habits are, are off the charts. That was one thing we talked about in the spring that we need to be better at, and you know, our practices are, are, are excellent. We practice at pace all week, Monday through Thursday, and we get in the game Friday night, and it's just it's like old hat. We just go right into it. I think it's real hard for teams that, that kind of take it easy in practice and then kind of flip the switch on Friday night. It's, it's hard to do that, and that's one thing we really you know, focused on this, is having good practice habits. I know you're always looking for things from people too. A couple people I just want to point out that many of you know, some may not. Steve Hagwell right here is the commissioner of the ECAC who has two teams here obviously in the Frozen Four. Steve, raise your hand so people know who you are. And Jack McDonald, the athletic director. Quinnipiac back there in the gold, Jack. So, uh, just pe people that you may want to talk to as we go along. And we'll go over to Bernie. Bernie Corbett, Hockey on Campus, Sirius XM Radio uh, coach. You just alluded to the fact of the seniors, I just think it's a staggering number. There's such an attrition rate in college hockey. The fact that you've got any given moment five forwards, four defensemen, a senior goalie. Did you feel this was a special group? You've had some 20 win seasons, you've had several of them, yes. but this particular group had those intangibles to get you to this point. And also, just as a, maybe a problem that you have, when you have a defensive team meeting, you're unable to say, hey, Zach, am I correct? Yes, yeah. Because yeah, half the defense four, turns around. We got four Zachs, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I knew go from the summer, I were going back to the spring, like this would be the best team we've ever had. I knew that. Uh, we had a phenomenal core coming back. Um, I did feel like Hartzell was going to take another jump in his game. Um, and then we, you know, we, we didn't add a lot, but I knew the kids we were going to add were going were to be big. I knew, I knew Jordan was going to really give us some extra goals. I knew St. Dennis was going to come in. And, you know, those two guys have given us depth, uh, you know, on our top three lines. And, um, you know, did I think we were going to be this good? No, but I thought we were going to be really good. I thought we would be... I knew we'd be top 20, top 15, and had a good chance of being top 10. And then, like I said before, you know, some of the things fell into place. You know, like Bryce and Danny, like I can't, I can't tell you how much they've helped us this year. That's, and you always expect your sophomores to take big jumps, but they've been, they've been awesome. I thought Federico was one of our best players last week, and he was against Union. He was an absolute stud. And when you get kids to go from being your seven to your two, and you're gonna, you're gonna win a lot of hockey games. Jocko, is that your phone going off? That's a fine. Uh, <laughs> And I think four Zacks has got to be a single team Frozen Four record. We'll check that one for you right here in front. Andy Merritt from the New England Hockey Journal. Uh, for Coach and, and for Zach, especially if you guys want to chime in, feel free. You've, you've mentioned Eric a couple of times now. Um, games at this time of year tend to be won on one or two broken plays, a mistake here, a mistake there. How much does it help the, the confidence level going into a game um, like tomorrow night, knowing that you've got a guy back there who's one of the best goaltenders in the league, and, and he has made the leap that you're talking about. I think it's I think it's been pivotal all year for us. You know, we've uh, Hartzell's been our rock. You know, um, and uh, you know, like the Union game, he didn't get a ton of work, but he makes that save on Novak early in the game. It might be a different hockey game. That was a big save, and, and then we and then we go to work, and and uh, I wouldn't say it an easy night, but not as hard as he's had all year. But he's he's been great for us. He gives us a ton of confidence. Um, and the other thing, you know, we have four senior defensemen who have been great, and uh, they, they've, they've had an awesome year. So, it, you know, it's certainly that's something you want to have, and I think that's why we've, we've, we've had a ton of close games. You know, I, everybody looks at the 21 game on Beaton Street. We didn't blow anybody out. 
I don't think any. I don't think there was one blowout in the 21 games. And uh, so we've been in a lot of close tight games, and that's where you, your experience and the game savvy comes in. Yeah, do you want Zach to comment on that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would just say, I mean, it's irreplaceable to have a goalie, obviously, of um, Eric's capabilities. But I think a lot of it comes down to uh, we don't want to rely on him. But it allows the rest of the team to play confident, play calm, and it kind of gives us a, a sense of, um, I guess, calmness is the best word I could have used. Um, it allows everybody to play their own game and not worry about anything else when you know you have him back there just in case. Okay, how are we doing? Okay, yes, sir, in the back, sir. Yeah, I got one question. Uh, Cal Staten from WTNH in New Haven. Um, obviously, being an unprecedented season for you guys this year, being the number one overall seed, you guys feel any pressure to kind of like finish it off with the national championship? Who's that for? Uh, any of them. Any of them. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll take that. Um, <laughs> I, I think there's, I think there's there's pressure on all four teams here. You know, there's there's a ton of pressure on all four of us. It's it's equal. It's across the board. I mean. Um, I think there's 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 pressure all year long. You know, we, we we play a home game against Yale, and you know we got I don't even know how many people coming through the rafters for standing room. I mean, there's pressure in that game. We have TV games, so you know certainly there, there's more in this. Um, but we had a lot of pressure last weekend, so uh, you know yeah, it's there. Uh, we're not going to focus on the national championship. We need to focus on St. Cloud, and um, you know there's there's a there's you know everyone in the Quinnipiac community is looking at us. Everyone in the college hockey world is looking at us, but. They're doing the same thing to St. Cloud, so it's it's equal. It's equal footing, and and you know I think in the end, uh, you know both teams have to manage that pressure. Is that good? Do you want any of the players? Or one of them, one of them? guys. Uh, we'll, we'll let this lottery take place, and you guys figure out who's going to comment. Jeremy. Jeremy. Oh, um, you want to vote in the audience? Do we want to take it? No, Jeremy. I, I can take that. Um, yeah, I think just what Coach said. I mean, everyone's going to have pressure. Uh, I think it's just the way you handle it, and I think we got a good group of guys, and our coaching staff is going to make sure that we're ready uh, to do what we have to do. And uh, if we do that, then I think we'll be successful. All right, are we good? All right, uh, guys, best of luck, congratulations, and uh, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.